Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. In case you're new here, my name is Jess and I love doing DIY, making clothes in a seemly but pretty way. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I make my reversible jacket. This is my original inspiration for this jacket. I didn't plan to make it reversible in the beginning, but when I was looking for the way to make it, I realized that I actually can make it reversible because the bias of the binding at the ends of the jacket and I track it out and the result is just so amazing. I feel like I have two different types of jackets in one and it feels so cool. I can easily mix and match with my different clothes. That's why I hope you guys will like it and track it out. And let's get started. The first step is making the pattern for the jacket. To make the back bias pattern, I draw a straight line and a horizontal line cutting each other foot. From the first straight line, I keep drawing another one two centimeter next to it. From the cutting point between this line and the horizontal line, I mark up 8.5 cm, which is the half of the next side of the jacket that I want, then drawing a perpendicular line from that mark. The width of this line will be 3 cm, which is the tip of the neck at the back bias, then drawing a straight line from the end of the perpendicular line. After that, I draw a slanted line to connect the end of the new straight line to the mask on the second one. I mark in the middle of this slanted line first, then connecting it to the end of the perpendicular line later. I keep marking in the middle of the new slanted line before connecting it to the mask on the second straight line and the end of the third straight line. Based on it, I draw a slightly curved line to create the neckline at the back bias. From the cutting point fitting the second straight line and the horizontal line, I keep making another one at 19cm which is the half of the shoulder side. Then drawing a perpendicular line from that mark. The width of this line will be 3.2cm which is 1 by 10 my shoulder side minus a half centimeter. Then connect the end of the perpendicular line to the mask on the neck line to create the shoulder line of the back bias. From the second straight line, I draw another one 24cm away from it. It's a quarter of my bust side blood 4cm. It's also the bust line of the back bias. From the cutting point between this line and the horizontal line, I mark up 23cm which is a quarter of my bust side blood 3cm. Then I continue the perpendicular line from the shoulder to cut the bust line. From the cutting point, I mark inside 1.5cm on the burst line, then connect this mark to the end of the shoulder line. I mark in the middle of this slanted line first, then connecting it to the mask on the burst line that I made in the beginning. I keep marking in the middle of the new slanted line before connecting it to the second mark on the burst line. Keep doing the same way like this for the new slanted line. Based on it, I draw a curved line to create the sleeve line of the back bias. From the second straight line, I keep drawing another one 50cm away from it. It's the length from the shoulder to my hip. It's also the length of the jacket that I want. From the cutting point between this line and the horizontal line, I mark up 23cm, which is a quarter of my bust side blood 3cm. It's also the same width at the mask I made on the bust line before. Then connecting that mark to the end of the sleeve line on the bust line to create the side line of the back bias. Add in 1cm for seam allowance after that, except 3cm seam allowance at the end of the back bias. And we will have the back bias pattern after cutting. You will need to cut this pattern in full fabric at the horizontal line. Moving to the front bias, I will bake on the back bias pattern to make it. Instead of creating the shoulder line from the second straight line, I do it from the first one. From the cutting point between the first straight line and the horizontal line, I mark at 8cm on the horizontal line. It's the dip of the neck at the front jacket. Then drawing a curved line from the end of the new shoulder line to that mark to create the front neck line. 
from the cutting point between the perpendicular line on the shoulder and the bust line and mark inside 2.5 cm on the bust line, then connect it to the end of the new shoulder line. From the end of the sleeve line, I mark outside 1 cm on the bust line. So the width of the bust line at the front jacket will be 24 cm, which is 1 cm bigger than the back. After that, I create a sleeve line for the front bodice in the similar way that I did at the back bodice. because I increase 1 cm for the bust line, so I do the same for the ending line. To create the button in the buttonhole area, I draw a horizontal line at 2 cm outside the current one. 2 cm is the half of the width of the button area that I want. Then add in 1 cm for seam allowance after that, except 3 cm seam allowance for the ending line. And we will have the front bodice pattern after cutting. You will need to cut two pieces for this pattern in the opposite way. To make the sleeve pattern, I measure the total length of the sleeve line at the front and the back bodice first. After that, I draw a straight line in the horizontal line cutting each other. From the cutting point, I mark at 11 cm on the right side of the horizontal line. It's 1 by 5 my bust side minus 5 cm. After that, I draw a slanted line from this mark to cut the straight line at one point. The width of this slanted line will be a half of the total width of the sleeve line at the front and the back border that I checked before, minus 2 cm. I divide this slanted line into three equal parts. From the middle of the first two parts, I draw a perpendicular line 2 cm wide outside of it. I mark in the middle of the third equal part first then drawing a perpendicular line a half centimeter wide inside the slanted line. After that, I draw a curved line that goes through on this mark to create a sleeve line for the sleeve pattern. Make sure the width of this sleeve line will be a half of the total width of the sleeve line at the front and the back bodice. From the top of the sleeve, I mark a 60 cm on the horizontal line. It's the length from the shoulder to over my wrist. It's also the length of the sleeve that I want. Then drawing a straight line from that mark, from the end of this straight line, I mark up 14 cm, which is a half of the width at the end of the sleeve that I want. Make sure this width will be bigger than the width of your hand, so you can wear the jacket easily later. I connect this mark to the end of the sleeve line to create the underarm big line of the sleeve. I make this line a big curve after that to make it nicer. Add in 1 cm for seam allowance after that, except 3 cm seam allowance at the end of the sleeve and you will have the sleeve pattern after cutting. Now, let's start sewing this jacket. Here's the back bodice piece of the jacket. I connect it to two pieces of the front bodice at the shoulders and two side lines. At the sleeve, I connect two underarm big lines together first. Then connect the sleeves to the bodice at the sleeve lines later, and sewing. And we will finish one face of the jacket after that. I do the same for the other face of the jacket. However, I want this face a bit different to the other one, so I added the fact pocket at the end of the front bodice. I cut a rectangle with 15cm width, which is the width of the pocket that I want, plus 2cm for seam allowance. 
and 20 cm length, which is two times the length of the pocket blood 4 cm for seam allowance. I fold the rectangle in half by the length like foot, then sew to connect them together. I use the bias tab with 1.5 cm width to cover on angle of the pocket and sewing. At the front bodice of the jacket, I draw a line at 15 cm above the ending line. It's the top of the pocket that I want. From the middle of the front bodice, I mark inside 7.5 cm on the horizontal line I just drew before that. It will be the side position of the pocket, then add in the pocket there later, and sewing. After the first seam, I cut the end fabric in half foot. Then I fold the other side of the pocket over it and make the second seam. Doing the same for the other side of the front bodice. Now I'm connecting two jackets together. Make sure their inside face will face each other. I connect the sleeve lines together to make sure the sleeve won't be moving when wearing the jacket. You can make the seam over the first one or next to the first one. After that, I connect the rest of two jackets together and sewing. Then I use the bias tab with one and a half centimeter width to cover them. And I finished this DIY. Here's my final result. The jacket is so cool. With two different faces, I can easily make and match with my outfit without having a lot of trackers. Hope you guys like it and track it out soon. See you next week.